I'm giving this crazy shake effect away for free and I'll show you how to make it. Click the link in the description down below to download this shake preset for free and let's show you how to install it on Windows and Mac. On your PC, navigate to wherever you downloaded that file and right click, select extract all. Once extracted, double click on your KH Shake V1 and simply select the FFX file in there and copy it and then head on into your documents on your PC. Go into Adobe, Adobe After Effects, User Presets and simply paste that in there. For Mac, it's essentially the same. Double click on your zip layer, copy the FFX file, head on over to Documents, Adobe, Adobe After Effects, and then paste it into User Presets. Now let's show you how to actually create the effect. Be sure to stick around at the end of this video to learn a deep dive on how I actually created it. All you have to do is find your transition point and then we wanna create a transition that's like either 10 to 20 frames long. You can make this as long as you want, but I found that this works great. Hold shift and the left arrow key twice. That will jump me 10 frames in that direction and click C on your keyboard and make a cut. Go back to the center, hold shift and the right arrow key twice. That'll jump you 10 frames out in that direction and then highlight both of those, right click and let's nest this clip. Tran one for transition one. Right click on that nested layer and select replace with After Effects composition. After Effects is gonna boot up and then all you have to do is save this. So I'm gonna save it as Tran one for transition one. Go over to effects and presets and type in KH and then you're gonna find KH shake V1. Drag that onto your transition. Immediately once you drag the preset on, you're gonna see that we're gonna start to already get a shake, which is pretty cool. Up in the effects controls, you can see we have a ton of options right here. Under this menu, you have user preset and then a bunch of predefined values that I've already set for you. So you can simply scroll through here and find a shake that you like. They're all very different and they all have their unique properties, so be sure to play around with them. One thing that you should know is that if you're on user input, you can simply change all of these values right here and get your own custom preset. The shake intro outro time, that basically controls how long it takes for the shake to be at maximum strength. So if your transition's really quick, I would highly recommend changing that to like 0.1 to 0.5. But if you have a longer transition and you want it to evolve over, let's say five seconds, you can simply adjust that to five. And it's going to take five seconds until you start seeing your your shake. Your shake amplitude basically increases or decreases how much shake you have. And your shake frequency basically denotes how fast you want it to shake. So if I increase that a little bit, you'll see that my shake starts shaking a little bit more. And your shake smoothness will basically smooth out that shake. So if you change it to something like 30, you'll see that we're getting more of a wiggle function, which is kind of cool as well. But I found that keeping it around five works good. And again, just select any of these presets because it's going to give you a predetermined value within the expression. One final note is that you can actually select this motion blur button right here. And if you don't see that button down at the bottom left, click the expand or collapse the layer switches panel to see this motion blur. This will add some seamless motion blur to your transition so it makes it look a little bit better. And then once you're happy with what it looks like, all you have to do is go file, save. And then you can minimize After Effects because we're probably gonna be coming back to this later. And you can see immediately within our timeline, we have this crazy shake transition that's very seamless. Now I wanna show you how fast this is. Let's go between these two clips right here. And you don't have to actually be exact with this. You can kind of just click around anywhere, right click, nest, tran two, right click, replace with After Effects composition, drag on KH shake, add motion blur. So not much is happening right now. So let's change this shake intro outro time to 0.1. And we kind of got like a little subtle shake going on, but I like it. So I'm gonna click file save. Minimize After Effects, let's go to this final transition and let's make this one a little bit longer. So I think that looks good for a transition and I'm gonna highlight both those layers, right click, nest, tran three. Right click on that, go to replace with After Effects composition. Drag on KH Shake V1 and let's change this preset to preset seven. 
So this one's a little bit crazy, but notice that if I scroll through here, my transition point is a little over a second. So I'm simply going to change my shake intro outro time to one. So that means that this will slowly get stronger and stronger all the way up until one second, and then it will slowly decrease all the way back to zero because this is based on the layer intro and outro. And I'm going to select the motion blur button and then I got this. So that's a little extreme, but it's still pretty cool. Go to file, save. So as you can see, this last one is a little bit too extreme for my taste, but the fun thing is, is whenever you make these, you can simply right click on any of them and go to edit original. And that's gonna open that back up within After Effects and you can adjust these parameters. Like, like if you wanna adjust the preset so it's not as strong or change it out for a different value. One final note, you can actually keyframe these transitions as well if you are familiar with that. So select your transition, click UU, and you can see that we have all of these things right here. And you can actually read the expression that I'm gonna explain next. All you have to do is simply adjust some of these values. So you can come in here and add some keyframes under your shake amplitude, your shake frequency, like right there, move forward a little bit, increase that to like, let's say 300 and then come back down and decrease this to 50. What that's going to do is it's going to give you some custom parameters so then you can add shakes wherever you want. For example, right here, there's not much going on, so let's add a keyframe, go a couple frames forward, increase that, go a couple frames, and decrease that back down to, let's say, 20. So this way you can get a custom shake transition if you want. So now let's show you how to actually build this out, and this is where it gets complex. So if you want to skip writing it out, you can just copy that pinned comment on this video and paste it into the position expression editor for whatever you are trying to apply a camera shake. And you can fast forward to 10 minutes and 6 seconds to get an explanation line by line. So we have a simple shape layer right here, and I've set the anchor point to the center using the lock anchor point, and all I'm gonna do is press P on my keyboard to bring up the position editor. I'm gonna hit Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and select the little time stop right there. That's gonna bring up the expression editor. So we want to start by creating three variables, VAR for variable, and then I'm gonna type amplitude, and I'm gonna set that equal to 100, and then I'm gonna end each line with a semicolon. And then I'm gonna create another variable, frequency, and I'm gonna equal that to 25, and then semicolon. And then I'm gonna create a final variable, and this one's gonna be called smoothness. Equal that to five, and then finish it off with a semicolon. I'm gonna click enter, enter, and this is where we're gonna start to have some fun. I'm gonna create another variable, VAR, and this one's gonna be fade in time, equal to in point plus one, semicolon. Let's create another variable, VAR, fade out time is equal to the out point minus one, semicolon. And then we're gonna create a final variable, fade, F-A-D-E equals, and then we're gonna create an ease function. And inside this function, we're gonna type time, which is our T, and then in point, which is our T min, and then fade in time, which is our T max, and then we're gonna set that T min equal to zero, comma, one. And then go outside the parentheses, and we're gonna multiply this by another ease function, but this time we're gonna do one minus ease, and then inside the function we're gonna do time, and then we're gonna do fade out time for our T min, and then I'm gonna, our out point, for our value one we're gonna put zero, and for our value two we're gonna put one. Then I'm gonna go outside those parentheses and do a semicolon. Enter, enter, and we're gonna create another variable, and then we're gonna call this one x, and we're gonna equal this to position, and then we're gonna do brackets zero, because zero is our x and one is our y. Outside those brackets, we're gonna add, and then we're gonna create a noise function, and inside this function, we're gonna do time times frequency divided by smoothness, and then we're gonna go outside those parentheses and multiply this by our amplitude times our fade. And then we're gonna close that off with a semicolon. Similarly, we are going to create another variable for y, and this time our position is going to be equal to one for y. Go outside those parentheses, add noise, and inside this noise, we're actually gonna create another parentheses because we're gonna do time times frequency plus 
1000, and I'm gonna explain this later, go outside that first parentheses and divide this by smoothness, and then go outside that parentheses and multiply this by amplitude, and multiply that by fade. And then click enter enter and make a bracket and we just have to make an X and Y array. And then you can click out. And right away we start to get this crazy little shake effect. And whenever you change things up here, like 200, it's going to change how the shake effect looks. And you can also add motion blur. So let's explain these line by line and what they mean. This first line declares a variable amplitude and assigns it the value of 100. This value will be used later in the expression to define the maximum deviation of the current position. This second line declares a variable frequency and assigns it the value of 25. This value will affect the frequency of the noise function and ultimately the speed of the movement. And our third line declares the variable smoothness and assigns it the value of five. This value will be used to smooth out the noise function, ultimately affecting the smoothness of the movement. On this line, we have declared the variable fade in time and set it equal to endpoint plus one. Endpoint is a built-in After Effects property that represents the time the layer starts by adding one the expression specifies that the fade in time will be one second after the layer starts. So for example, if we change this to three and let's increase the amplitude for dramatic effect, it's gonna take all the way until three seconds till this expression gets to full capacity. This line is also very similar. So we've declared the variable fade out time and assigned it the value of out point minus one. Out point is like before an after effects property that represents the time the layer ends. By subtracting one, the expression specifies that the fade out time will be one second before the layer ends. And again, if I change that to three, at three seconds before this layer end, it's going to start slowing this animation down. And finally, for this section, we have set the variable fade and created this ease function. The ease function is used to smoothly interpolate between two values over a specified range. In this case, fade will be zero at the endpoint and increase to one at fade in time. It will stay at one until fade out time and then decrease to zero at out point. Now that's pretty complex. I've done some videos on linear expressions in the past. If you don't know what a linear expression is, I would highly recommend checking them out. This line declares a variable X and assigns it a value that will be used to set the X coordinates of the layer's position, position zero, since zero is X and one is Y. The noise function generates a random value between negative one and one. By multiplying time by frequency and dividing by smoothness, the expression controls the speed and the smoothness of the movement. Then by multiplying by amplitude, the expression controls the maximum deviation from the current position. Finally, by multiplying by fade, the expression ensures that the movement will fade in and out as specified earlier. This line is very similar. The only difference is we've changed this to one to account for Y. And then we've also added this little plus 1000 in here and included it within a parentheses. So then this function itself will start before dividing by smoothness. And the only reason that we did that, we added a thousand to time times frequency before dividing by smoothness because this ensures that the noise function will generate different values for the X and Y coordinates, resulting in, you know, a more natural movement. And then at the bottom, we have created a simple X and Y array. This is the final result of the expression and will be used by After Effects to set the position of the layer. So what can you do with this? Well, with this simple expression right here, you can change the amplitude to let's say 400. The frequency changes how fast this works, so let's do 50, and the smoothness changes how smooth it is. So if we change that to one, it's just gonna be super jittery and it's gonna go all over the place, which is pretty cool. And you can also add motion blur, so you can start to see like what this thing is actually doing. I like keeping the frequency anywhere from 10 to 25 and the smoothness five to 10. If you increase the smoothness to like 30, you're gonna start to get something like a wiggle expression. 
but noise is better than a wiggle because I think it's more random than the wiggle expression is. That's pretty much it, and if you guys stuck around to the very end, I appreciate it because this is kind of complex. I've been diving into JavaScript more, and I'm learning something new every single week. So I'm really enjoying it. As always, click that like button if you're still here. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.